What's up, everybody? Thanks for stopping by my video. I'm Chris Magma, and the uh, Washington Commanders have been really busy in the past week. I'm going to start off by saying um, the Washington Commanders have traded Sam Howell to the Seattle Seahawks for a third-round pick and a fifth-round pick. So a lot of people were speculating that when we got Mariota, that Sam Howell was going to be a third quarterback, and we was going to draft a quarterback. So now... We guaranteed to draft a quarterback. Shoot, I'm thinking we might draft maybe two quarterbacks. You know, one in the, one in the first round and maybe one in the sixth or seventh. Okay, so they first signed Zach Hurts to a one-year max five million dollars. Now Zach Hurts is a step up from Logan Thomas. As a matter of fact, everybody that they picked in the free agency is a step up from what we had. So they get rid of every almost everybody that Ron Rivera and the gang picked. So they probably went in there and looked at tape, evaluated everybody, and be like, look, yeah, we're not signing him. We're not re-signing him. We, yeah, we, we ain't balling with them. So they probably looked at the tape and saw that Sam Howe, he could have thrown the ball here or he could have thrown the ball there, and they probably figured, yeah, we're not going to really work with him. We're going to just trade and, and see if we can get some more picks for them. They are making really smart moves. And after all these free agencies that I'm about to break down, just like what JP posted, perhaps most encouraging thing about Commander's free agency moves is they've signed a lot of guys, filled a lot of holes, but have an impact long term. Salary cap flexibility on the books now with 100 million plus for 2025. So let's break down everybody that they, you know, that they signed. Like I said, Zach Hurts. He's known for getting open, you know, creating space between him and the defender. He'll be an easy target for a young quarterback. Then they sign Austin Eckler. Eckler gets a $3 million signing bonus and $4.82 million total in one year with a chance to earn another $1.5 million in incentives this season. Now, Austin Eckler has a nose for the touchdown. I mean, for fantasy people that had him, you know, past few years, He's known to have a lot of touchdowns. I think a total of maybe nine or ten touchdowns a season. You know, he has like 69 touchdowns in seven seasons or something like that. He knows how to find the end zone. And he's a step up from Antonio Gibson. Now, Gibson, you know, he flashed every now and then, but he wasn't a real running back. Like I always said, we need a running back that can get shifty, that can, you know, find the holes. And a lot of times, I think Antonio Gibson didn't find the holes. He hit the wrong holes. We all know that he fumbles a lot too. So that was another another issue that it seems like it happens like at least once or twice a season. So that was a step up <laughs> from what we had. Now, a lot of people keep talking about us signing old players or players over a certain age and all this other stuff. You got to get some veteran players in here. So when we draft players or the players behind them can learn from them, you know, it's experience. And that's why they, another thing, why they signed the one-year deals. You train this person behind you, then, you know, y'all can work together. Then this person will step up if we don't re-sign you. Or you stay here and we can, you know, switch you out. You know, it's a lot of, lot of, we need depth too. There's another thing. They get rid of everybody. We had like 27 players out of feet three. Like JP said in this post, they're filling a lot of holes. They're creating depth. And I noticed that a lot of the players are real football players that want to thump people and they know how to win. Even if they're not like a household name, like real popular, you know, for the, you know, for people that like popular players and like that, you know. But like I said, everyone was a step up from what we had. And that's a step in the right direction, if you ask me. Then they got Frankie Lubu from the Panthers. Now, I wasn't really familiar with Frankie Lubu, but I watched his highlight tape. And that's what Joe Witt said he wanted. We're going to be real physical. Looks like he wants to be real physical every time he tackles somebody. From what I've seen. He, he has a nose for the ball. He's like a heat-seeking missile. He seems like he's getting better every year. In 2021, he had a total of 43 tackles. 2022, he had 111 tackles. 2023, 125 tackles. So I'm going to say this year, he's going to have 150 tackles. I'm just going to put it out there. I don't want to mess up these people's name, but we've got Durant Armstrong, a three-year deal, $33 million max. And, I, you know, I heard that he was like, you know, 
you know, he was a sleeper because everybody was concentrating on Michael Parsons and other people. And, you know, he was a sleeper right there. And he probably, and he probably has a high ceiling, something that, that, that Joe Witt and them see. So they brought him on. So we got Tyler. But he seems like he's a tough dude. And he didn't miss that many games. And that's another thing that we need. We need consistency out of these players and durability. You know, we got to keep players on the field because a lot of players, you know, it seems like we cursed or something. We get a lot of players that get hurt, especially players that we really, really, really think going to do something, and they get hurt. It could be a quarterback, could be a wide receiver, tight end, tackles, whatever. Cornerback, seems like everybody gets hurt. But a lot of these players that they picking, they seem like they don't miss that many games. Got Brandon McManus. We know we need a kicker. I said we shouldn't re-sign Joey Sly. So, and we didn't. He hasn't missed many kicks. And especially he don't miss kicks from 20 or 30 yards. Like Joey Sly would do every once in a while. With no win. But, like I said, everybody's a step up from what we had. So I don't know how anybody can be mad at a lot of these free agent signings. I don't know how to shout the name, so I'm going to just say Tyler Badass. So Tyler Badass only allowed four sacks in the last 1,298 snaps. That's pretty damn good, if you ask me. Um, Nick Allegretti, I guess that's how you pronounce the name. He only allowed two sacks in the last 316 pro snaps. And we already know Sam Cosme, he only allowed one sack in 736 snaps. So that's why they kept him. Now all we need is some left tackles and right tackles which I figure they might go to draft because they don't come on trees. You know, if you got a good left tackle or right tackle, a lot of times people are not going to get rid of them unless it's like a money issue, you know, with them or a cap issue. Pittman was a 2019 undrafted free agent. He spent his entire career with the Lions. He's played in every game over the past three seasons. Like I said, durability. With the majority of his snaps coming on special teams. So he's a special teams player that's probably why we re-signed Reeves and Crowder both of them are special teams players now Reeves is pretty good you know he went to the Pro Bowl and James and Crowder did okay he was better than punt return that we had prior to him so we signed Jeremy Chin most likely not they're not gonna bring back Cam Curl which I'm okay with Chin a 2020 second round selection finished as the defensive rookie of the year runner up to Chase Young <laughs> He started 50 out of 54 games during his time in Carolina and tallied two interceptions, four sacks, and 324 tackles. Okay, that's pretty good. There's no question whether he's the type of assertive presence the staff converts while forging a new defensive identity. He will sometimes play behind or alongside another ex-Panther, linebacker Frankie Louvre. And we signed the long snapper, Tyler Ott. So Tyler played for the Ravens last season after six years with Seattle, where Izzo coached before joining Washington this season. So somebody that's familiar with him, that's why they brought him in. So you already know that I said, but we, we got Marcus Mariota. Everybody was wondering why we got Marcus Mariota, and I was the same way. But maybe the kind of style that Marcus Mariota plays is probably the kind of style that they want him to mentor whoever we draft. All right, let me talk about Bobby Wagner. So we only signed him for a one-year deal. And yes, he's up there in age, but he led the NFL in tackles with 183 for Seattle last season. The third time in his career, he's led the league in that category. So, and I looked at his highlight reels too. He has a nose for the ball too. And he's a type that want to thump somebody too. So we done established the linebacker position. And I'm sure they're going to draft another linebacker. And he can mentor them. He'll be a good leader on that defense because I don't think Jonathan Allen is really a good leader. Jonathan Allen is like lead by example leader. He's not really vocal like that. You know, I don't know what he's doing in the locker rooms. But on the interviews, he just seemed like, hey, I'm just going to do what I can do. And, you know, everybody else, you know, just worry about what they can do and worry about their job, blah, blah, blah. Nah. You got to get somebody like, look, this is how we're going to do it. This is how we should be done. This, you know, we go out there, you know, knock some blocks off. You know what I'm saying? And get somebody hype, you know, like a London Fletcher type of person. You know, London Fletcher always be like, defense set the toe. And all this, all this other stuff. You know, he's, you know, get hype. So I think that's what Bobby Wagner would bring. A lot of that leadership in that locker room for that defense. I think they said that they're going to come in 
they're not going to just give somebody the captain the title. They're going to just make them earn it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm thinking Bobby going to earn that title off the break. You know what I'm saying? So that was a huge plus getting him because he's almost like Ray Lewis. London Fletcher type of person that be flying around and hitting people, getting the fumbles, getting into the end zone. You know, I'm not sure if he can cover like he used to, you know, left and right. I don't know, but I'm thinking him and Frankie working together. Okay, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comment section what you think about the free agent signings. Do you like the free agent signings? Are you skeptical for some of them? Are you skeptical with like most of them? Do you want us to get young? I know some people were mad about the one, why we signed everybody the one year deals. Look, that's, you know, we saving money. I mean, if they want to come play for us for one year, why not sign them for one year? Why, you know, why not sign them for one year? You probably think, okay, we could have got somebody younger and all this other stuff. No, we're getting people that we're familiar with and know the system a little bit, know the coaches a little bit, and people that they figure want to play football and want to practice hard. And that people that soft, it'd be like, ah, like they were doing with Eric Bieniemy was here. Getting rid of all these soft people. Bringing in people that want to play. Some real football players, not people that just want to check. So if you mad at that, then something must be wrong with you. I don't know. I'm just optimistic. You know, I figure this is, gonna, this is a new era. We got everything new. We got new owner, new GM. We have a bunch of new players. This is gonna be a this is gonna be a new team with the same name, and that's gonna change in a few years. And then after that, the location gonna change. So we want to come up, I guess. But we all have our opinions. I want to know y'all opinions. Put post in the comment section what you think. You know, it's all right if you don't agree with me. I know everybody don't agree with everything. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. I know everybody's hard to please. You can't please everybody. And it's all right. It's all right if you don't agree with me. Just post in the comment section. All right? I'm Chris Magma. Thank y'all for stopping by. I'll see y'all in the next video.